There's a very unusual case playing out right now involving a U.S. citizen thought to be fighting for the Islamic State. But at the heart of all of it, questions over what rights Americans have when they get suspected of fighting for the enemy, specifically for ISIS. We do not know much about this American, except that he's going by John Doe for the moment. And for the past nine months, the United States military has been holding him in custody in Iraq without any charges. Now the Trump administration is looking to release him and return him to Syria. The American Civil Liberties Union, which is representing the guy, has called that a death warrant. Our national security correspondent, Jennifer Griffin, with the news from the Pentagon. Jennifer? Shepard, you don't usually have the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, petitioning the U.S. military to keep an American citizen imprisoned. But in this unusual case involving a U.S. citizen, it did. Known in the filing before U.S. District Court as John Doe, as you mentioned, this American was picked up on the battlefield by a U.S.-backed militia in Syria and detained as an enemy combatant in Iraq since last September. The U.S. military had hoped to transfer him to a country with a, quote, strong and sovereign interest. That request was denied by a U.S. federal judge. It's not clear whether the military wanted to transfer the alleged American ISIS fighter to the U.S. for prosecution, to Guantanamo Bay, or to a third country. Their request was essentially denied, and just this week, the Justice Department informed the court the Defense Department planned to release this American in Syria within 72 hours. That's when the ACLU again stepped in, arguing for a temporary restraining order, quote, what the government is offering our client is no release. It's a death warrant. This is a disgraceful way to treat an American citizen. Now our fight for our client's right to, to due process has also become a fight for his right to life. This morning in court, the government argue, agreed not to release the prisoner until a court hearing on June 20th, Shep. Jennifer, what else are we learning from the Pentagon on this? Well, Mark Mitchell, the Pentagon's Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations, informed the court this week that the Defense Secretary had authorized the American prisoner's release in the same area where he was detained in Syria and would notify the local Syrian Defense Forces that the U.S. is not seeking his detention and that he should be allowed safe passage. Quote, Prisoner John Doe, quote, will be given $4,210 in cash, the same amount that he had in his possession when he was captured. He will also be provided a new cellular phone in its original sealed packaging, which he can activate. He will be provided sufficient food and water to last for several days. The ACLU argues this is a death sentence, a fascinating case regarding Americans detained overseas on the battlefield and what to do with them, Shep. Jennifer, thank you.